Hi everyone, my name is Julie. This is Keep Calm with Books and Coffee. I talk about books on this channel, mainly books about magic, and today we are going to be talking about my favorite book of 2023, which was God Killer by Hannah Canner. So like I mentioned today, we are going to be talking exclusively about God Killer and why I loved it so much in 2023. Of course, I gave this five out of five stars and I loved it to pieces. So let's jump into it. In this book, we are following Kissin, who is a god killer. She lives in a kingdom where gods are outlawed because the last time gods were allowed, they gained enough power that they almost destroyed the world in the god wars. And therefore, Kissin takes contracts to kill minor gods before they become more powerful and powerful enough to threaten the world again. Through her adventures, she runs into a young noble girl named Inara, and that young noble girl has a god attached to her. So when Kissin meets them, there's no way to destroy the god without destroying the girl. So Kissin takes them both on an adventure to a city where she thinks that there will be answers. On the way, they also encounter a knight who is disillusioned from the wars, but he is on a secret mission from the king and has his own agenda as well. Before we get too much further into this, I do want to mention that there are a number of content warnings for this book, including death of a parent, fire injury, violence, death, PTSD, and several others. Those are the big ones in my opinion, but I will have StoryGraph linked down below where you can see lists of user-generated uh, content warnings for your full perusal, or if you're looking for anything specific, you can check there that I might have missed. Uh, I gave this book five stars. I also listened to the audiobook and I would give the audiobook a three and a half or four stars. I did enjoy it. I thought it added to my experience, but I didn't love the narrator's style as much. It was a little bit breathy and I did think it was a little bit um, over the top, maybe. <laughs> like it was a little dramatic for the reading. But uh, I did enjoy it and I had a good time and I will be continuing to listen to this on audio. To start, I think if you combined The Witcher as well as the world building of Tamora Pierce, you would sort of get a sense of what's going on in this book and how the god system works as well as sort of the feeling I get from Kissin. Uh, the book has a lot of elements that I really liked and enjoyed and worked well for me, including things like really specific gods, gods of a specific place or place town or thing or skill as well as gradual world building and a gruff adult begrudgingly transporting a child somewhere like that is something that has a lot of like potential for me it also has that like ment mentor mentee feel to it as well as secret missions and fantastical road trips all of those are included in here and I absolutely love all those elements uh the, the it all combined into something special to me and I adored how this book was laid out as well we start off the book with a really hard hitting explosive scene and then we sort of start we have a time jump and then we start following our characters in what is our present day and then the world and the plot and the character stories slowly build over the rest of the book and I just thought it was put together beautifully. I do think the pacing is a bit slow but I was savoring the world building and the character building so much that that didn't bother me but I have seen some critiques of that um, as I read other people's reviews. Another element that I really loved was Kissin as a character. I would say she is our main character right now even though we have the other points of views. We have four total. Uh, she is sort of our, our centerpiece and she is angry. She's angry about how the world, the system, the gods have failed her and she has a sort of motivating rage within her to go after gods and then also help people survive gods. Uh, I think it is a bit different than if you've read Iron Widow and appreciated the feminine rage in that book and how cathartic it was. This feels similar to that but also it is more of a smoldering ra rage rather than the like white hot blinding rage of Iron Widow. This is more something that is old for Kissin, that is an old wound and old pain that she is using and it's it's festering and smoldering inside her, but it is still there and, and does bubble over and come into the world and out of her every once in a while. But I loved that about her and I just felt it was so uh, just relatable again, just like Iron Widow. 
all four of the point of views were really compelling. I really enjoyed how they developed over the book and how you could start to see characters and things happening that maybe weren't complete character changes, but you could see the kernels of how choices were being made and changes were happening and slowly working their way out. Because this book happens, it's like a pretty short book, so for characters to completely change would feel inauthentic. But by the time we get to the end of this book, you really start to see some of the choices and changes starting to grow out of the events of this book, and I thought that was really well done. Another element that I really appreciated was that Canner incorporated a lot of diversity throughout the book, and it felt very authentic, and it felt very... I mean, I can't speak to how well the representation was done because I am not... Uh, part of the groups that were represented here. However, I do. it did feel authentic in the way of it was something that followed all of our characters throughout the book. It was woven throughout the world. It was, you know, mentioned time and time again in a way that was part of our characters' lives. And it was woven in with that rather than just being something that was sort of a side piece. So we have things like multiple LGBT identities as well as deafness, using sign language, PTSD, like I mentioned at the top, Kissin is an amputee, there are other things as well, but just overall throughout the book, Kissin built a fantasy story and a fantasy world that is much more inclusive and diverse than what we see in a lot of traditional fantasy stories, and I really appreciated the care and time and thought she put into that. Overall, this book just really captured me, and by the time I hit the halfway point, I was sure it was going to be one of my top books of the year, and then it completely won me over by the end. The world building and the characters were my favorite part, and they really were compelling and just drug, drug me into the story, and I loved them so much. Uh, I can't wait to see what Canner comes out with in the sequel, and I will definitely be following her in years to come to see what else she puts out into the world, because I loved this book so so much. But that is it for me today. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any thoughts or feelings or want to share anything about God Killer, please let me know down below. I'd love to chat with you. Uh, if you don't have anything to chat about but you want to let me know you were here, you can always add the deer emoji for the cover of God Killer because that is absolutely gorgeous as well. Uh, but thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye!